Hello, and welcome to the National PTA Candidate Speeches and Queries. I am Teresa Williams, co-chair of the National PTA Elections Committee. In the recordings that follow, you will hear speeches and candidate query responses from candidates for National PTA Vice President of Membership. The candidates were recorded during the week of April 17th through the 19th. The video was edited to place candidates in a random order established prior to the recording. Candidates were recorded live. No candidate was given the questions in advance and no candidate was given an opportunity to repeat their speech or query responses. In addition, candidates did not hear other candidates' speeches or query responses during the recording process. During the recording process, members of the election committee acted as timekeepers and candidates were able to watch a timer as they spoke. Time started when the candidate began to speak and when time expired, the parliamentarian signaled the candidate to stop speaking. To maintain our policy on impartiality, Mary Remsen, National PTA's parliamentarian, moderated the speeches and queries. Don Ramoser, you are a candidate for vice president of membership. You will have three minutes. You may begin. I've been a dedicated PTA leader for over 20 years. Over those years, I've seen PTA go from a cohesive 10 million member association to where we are today, just under 2.4 million PTA faithful. We have a wonderful and productive history, yet now is about our future. Let's face it, we have challenges. Despite wonderful leadership, we have had years of declining membership. Leaders are harder to find and keep than ever. Our message is being drawn out by other influences. As dedicated PTA leaders, those facts may offend you. They offend me, but it's time to break that pattern. In 1897, a handful of women got together to help children move out of factories and into schools. They used their connections to recruit legions of mothers to assist in their efforts. PTAs today are in a similar situation, a small group of volunteers trying to make a difference. It's time to do it again. Yet, today is a very different world. We will help families of today understand what PTA is and what we have done in the past. We will build upon those previous efforts and innovate for the future. To do this, we must be ready to speak out and act beyond our loyal followers. Change the way we do business, address head-on the issues most affecting today's families. We will understand and communicate our value. PTA is a premium brand with incredible value to our members and community. So how do we attract more members? Once elected your vice president of membership, I want us to provide the resources that will empower all PTA leaders to be successful in their own membership goals. Those resources range from social media examples, recruiting verbiage, live webinars, learning modules, and much more. I would like our committee to become more accessible. If we do not know what your needs are, then how can we help? We need to listen to your asks. I want our committee to work more closely with state leaders. You don't need us to fix what isn't broken, but you need a way for us to help fill the gaps. By listening to your needs, we will tailor your resources that we provide. Please look at my biography. My 20 years of PTA leadership, other skills and knowledge are all combined to make me the right person right now. I look forward to being your hardworking, dedicated, passionate vice president of membership. I appreciate your vote will make that happen. Thank you. Thank you. The candidate will answer four queries and have 75 seconds to respond to each. Here is your first question. How familiar are you with the previous membership efforts of PTA and what would you do differently? You may respond. Would you please repeat the question? Yes, I can. How familiar are you with the previous membership efforts of PTA and what would you do differently? You may respond. I have been on many committees 
with National PTA, from field service to advocacy, uh, and, and done many things with National PTA regarding membership drives, moving forward, and what has been done through our, for our states to support them and help them with membership. I believe we have put together many good packages previously, but I think we need to go above and beyond now. We have had wonderful resources that have been given to our local PTAs and our state PTAs, but now it's time to take it to the next level and move forward with things that are new and different on, 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 the, on website development, on social media verbiage, different messages that can go on more quickly. Uh, National PTA has done a wonderful job working for these things, but it has not really gotten to the point of working towards what is needed today. Constantly barraging people, unfortunately, that's the way it works, is giving them as much information as we can and offering them as much as many tools as they can have. Thank you. Thank you. Your second question is, how do you plan on reaching the state and units with effective membership information? You may respond. Would you repeat the question, please? Yes, I can. How do you plan on reaching the state and units with effective membership information? You may respond. It is extremely important to communicate with our state and with our local units. We are in the fortunate position today that we do have those leadership names. And so I see things like our monthly membership report, going from a monthly membership report to a, a weekly reminder or a bi-weekly, we don't want to overload, but a bi-weekly reminder of here's where we, not necessarily where we are, here's what we need. Here's what is, here's what your resources we have for you today. It can be the short little blurb on a Facebook page. It can be a short blurb on uh, Twitter, just saying, hey, here's something to think about. Let's work on, the, uh, on this this week. Why don't you try this this week or next week? I think it needs to be a constant reminder of different things to do all the time. So every two weeks, I would propose that we get something out to, uh, on, whether it be a Twitter blog or Facebook to message to let people know to work towards more membership. Thank you. Your third question. How do you envision addressing the changes we see in younger families joining PTA? You may respond. Would you repeat the question? Yes, I can. How do you envision addressing the changes we see in younger families joining PTA? You may respond. I believe the way to get younger families joining PTA is to find out what their needs are today. What are the needs of today's families? Today's families are different than they were in 1897 and in 1950. And we need to get a better handle on what those needs are. So it's, whether it is through uh, surveys, whether it's having dedicated people who are the young, representing the younger families on, on our membership team, uh, whether we have focus groups, but we need to figure out where the where that divide is. It's it, it can't be what we're charging. It can't be you know that they don't have time. Yes, there's a time factor, but they it's still about their kids, their families, and moving things forward. We we have to we have to figure that out. And so the way to do that would be to study and to determine what the factors are and addressing those factors directly. Thank you. Thank you. Resources have dried up. 
shared two key areas on how we support the constituent associations and sustain their needs. You may respond. Would you repeat the question? Yes, I can. Resources have dried up. Share two key areas on how we support the constituent associations and sustain their needs. You may respond. Resources have dried up. It's been a difficult few years for many local PTAs and especially state PTAs. The, the thing that National PTA has done in an outstanding manner in the past few years is the pass-through grant program that we have been doing where we are getting grants from major corporations and, and, and foundations and moving it through National PTA to guide those funds to help children and families and schools move forward. Uh, that's been a wonderful program. Another way that we have done great things and are moving forward is our programs. I mean, you name the program. It, it's, it's incredible. We've got these, these wonderful programs from, from web safety, you know, web and internet safety, uh, to uh, reflections, to many different beautiful programs that we've got. From new ones like that, web safety, to old programs like reflections, which is a Stand, standing program that's been for here forever. Wonderful program, and that's the way I see we have helped our unit. Thank you for being with us this evening. Thank you. Charles Scott, you are a candidate for Vice President of Membership. You will speak for three minutes. You may begin. Hello, I'm Charles Scott from Tennessee, the Volunteer State. I'm humbled and honored to have been slated by the National Leadership Recruitment Committee as your National PTA Vice President of Membership. Some of you have already read the bylaws and the resumes. If not, I encourage you to. Three highly qualified candidates, one position. Yours is a tough decision to make. You each hold the future of PTA in your hands, just as it should be. So how does one decide? First, Look for a candidate that has displayed a true volunteer spirit that demonstrates their belief in National PTA's mission, vision, and its future via their work. Look for a candidate that displays true servant leadership that listens more than they talk and takes actions more than they delegate. Look for a candidate that seeks to find the solutions by working together, not one that seeks to find someone to blame. Look for a candidate that takes the time to speak to everyone, not just someone that they think can help them. Look beyond all the speeches and the answers at the candidate form, but look at the past histories and foresee the future. Don't judge a candidate on how well they dress, how they look, or how well they speak, but look deeper. Look into their heart, test their spirit, and you will know. Our members, you, have, and will always be the lifeblood of PTA. Every member of PTA needs to be valued for who you are. Owners and stakeholders of PTA's futures and our values, collaboration, commitment, diversity, respect, and accountability. The Vice President of Membership duty goes well beyond those five duties written in our bylaws. I believe that a good Vice President will listen, lead by example, have to remove obstacles, give due recognition for work well done, and inspire membership chairs and teams at all levels, every local unit, council, district, region, and every state to work together to move our association forward. You do the work. As a candidate, I bring the following recent and relevant experience to the table. Acting council membership chair, acting region director, supporting, reinstating, and chartering new local units. State membership diversity and, and inclusion chair, and I currently serve as a member of the National PTA Membership Committee. In closing, today's PTA continues to face many new challenges. And if entrusted with your boat, I will commit to first always keep you, the membership, in mind with every decision that is made. I ask for your vote, Charles Scott, for the National PTA Vice President of Membership. I am that candidate. Thank you. Thank you. The candidate will answer four queries 
and have 75 seconds to respond to each. Here is your first question. How familiar are you with the previous membership efforts of PTA and what would you do differently? You may respond. Great question. As I mentioned before in my speech, I was humbled that Anna selected me to be a member of the National PTA Membership Committee. Therefore, that gave me an opportunity, first and foremost, to have a good handle on what is going on with the current membership committee, the plan of work, how we tie in with our strategic plans. Also, I currently serve as a state membership and diversity chair. So my form at state level, I also understand the importance and the mission and value of membership. I think the PTA has a great start in, in the, the things they're doing today, including the new things, you belong in PTA. And I think we have a great staff that can help move membership forward. Also, having served on the board previously, I actually have a working re a relationship. I have a knowledge of the past membership chairs. So I think that experience combined with me, again, being a member of a local council and acting regional director to understand the local standpoint, we can mirror those to make sure that local PTI understands the value of membership and how important they are. Thank you. Thank you. Your second question is, how do you plan on reaching the state and unit with effective membership information? You may respond. Again, another great question. Actually, you can just look at my background experience. I've had the opportunity to serve as two terms as Tennessee Membership, Diversity, and Inclusion Chair. So I'm currently in my fourth year. One of the things we did as a committee, as we put in part of our plan of work, is to utilize Member Hub. And with that, during the summer, we actually sent information out to every membership chair, every local unit, and every diversity chair, letting them know their membership goals. In addition to that, anytime National PTA would send out inf any information that could, help that could help leaders, we made sure that that was part of our membership newsletter that went out. So I definitely understand their value and importance of communicating to the local level. And also understand the importance of every membership chair. It doesn't matter if they're the local unit, the council union, reason the director. We all have to work together in order to move membership forward. And as a matter of fact, we can actually see good progress as the latest membership numbers will show that all states are currently running ahead of last year's numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Your third question. How do you envision addressing the changes we see in younger families joining PTA? You may respond. Could you repeat that question, please? Yes, I can. How do you envision addressing the changes we see in younger families joining PTA? You may respond. Yes, that's a problem that pays that not only impacts PTA, but it, it really impacts all the volunteer groups. Also, I'm involved in Memphis Little League, and I saw there are less and less people involved in these activities. I think the most important thing is to let them know, as the theme says, you belong in PTA, and we really do have to show the value of PTA. And how do we do that? And it's easier said than done. The first thing is, I think we have to build a relationship and listen to the younger parents. Number one, find out what it is that they want. What do they want for their children and their future? And as soon as they do that, we let them know, hey, there's a PTA for that. That's when we can tie in the value of PTA. Let them know that membership has its privileges. Let them know the value of PTA. So I know it's not going to be easy to sell, but I definitely think that if we listen well and if we tie our values back to let them know that the things that PTA can do for you and that membership has its privileges, and not only let them know that, that we want to be a member of PTA, but they are owner and a stakeholder of PTA's future. Thank you. Thank you. Resources have dried up. Share two key areas on how we support the constituent associations and sustain their needs. You may respond. Yes, it is true that as membership number has gone down, that we have not been able to provide the, the resources that we normally could get from national PTA. But this I do know, and I've seen it by example. 
we have a great staff at National PTA Experiences. And actually, the resources are actually there. It's just more online. We may have to do a little bit better job of directing the states. And I think the states, for the most part, know how to get the resources they need. But maybe do a little bit better job in directing our local units on how to get the resources from National PTA. There are all kinds of membership tools, all kinds of training out there for new local unit presidents, membership chairs, and board members. They just may not be fully aware of it or know how to get to it. So it may be just a matter of tweaking our actual website so that we can make it easier for the local units to get to those resources and therefore see the value, not only of their dues that they pay to the states, but the dues that they pay directly to national PTA. It can be done. Thank you. Thank you for being with us this evening. Dr. Tracy Petaway, you are a candidate for Vice President of Membership. You will have three minutes. You may begin. Hello, I am Dr. Tracy Petaway and I am a National PTA Experience Candidate for the Office of Vice President of Membership. I served as an elected Board of Director member for National PTA for two consecutive terms, 2018 to 2022. While serving in this capacity, I dedicated precious time on the following National PTA committees, Convention, Membership, Governance, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and Strategic Planning, all while serving locally here in the nation of Texas in numerous executive roles, including but not limited to executive board member of Junior League, YMCA board member, Girl Scout Troop Leader, Jack and Jill of America Incorporated Protocol Chair, and Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated Parliamentarian. And as I might add, as a registered parliamentarian, I bring expertise to the table in operational procedures, due diligence, fiduciary responsibilities, duty of care, duties of obedience to follow the association's governing documents such as the Articles of Incorporation and bylaws. The expertise from my earned executive MBA from Baylor University to oversee financial affairs as well as safeguarding assets. I add value to states and locals with the ability to relate to and empathize with the marginalized population as I am a product of the marginalized population and I am a product of the Title I schools and I saw firsthand the needs and the difference between the haves and the have nots. And I vowed at that time to be the change needed so that no child feels as if they don't belong, that they are valued and that they do matter regardless of their environment. Members, you will be pleased if you select me as the vice president of membership because I am boots on the ground with a child in public school. So I have front eye contact. I see you of what the needs are, what's being expressed but overlooked, what's being asked but ignored, what's needed but dismissed. Membership is diverse and inclusive, and my career, my education, and my credentials have prepared me for this moment. I can create retention plans for city employees, county employees, and memberships of nonprofits and profit organizations through consulting. I am asking for your support and your vote, for I am the candidate you can trust to be present and a voice for you, your children, and your community. Thank you, Dr. Tracy Petaway, VP of Membership. Thank you. Thank you. The candidate will answer four queries and have 75 seconds to respond to each. Here is your first question. Okay. How familiar are you with the previous membership efforts of PTA and what would you do differently? You may respond. Thank you. Um, since I've been removed from the board for a year now, because uh, my term ended in 2022, when I left, I was very well aware of our membership campaign and ways of recruitment and retention, because that is a big deal, because we did suffer through the pandemic, trying to retain members and continue to express the value of membership. 
So what I can certainly say that we need to look at and work harder on is being inclusive, being intentional, having a purpose, sharing our stories, sharing lessons learned the hard way and things learned the best way in efforts to let everyone know that their membership, that their time, their resources, their commitment and their children and their families matter and that you are valued and we need your voice because they need to understand that we are here for all children. We are here to support education and we are here to be a, an asset and support the families, the educational system and the teachers. So one thing that I say we can't improve upon is being more intentional in our ask, being direct in our conversations and being authentic. That's very important, being authentic. Thank you. Thank you. Your second question is, how do you plan on reaching the state and units with effective membership information? You may respond. Thank you. Um, reaching out and being effective is very important. You be effective by doing your due diligence and knowing what it is that you're talking about. Because guess what? You'll be amazed of what those who you're speaking to know about what you're supposed to be talking to them about. So it's very important that you do your due diligence when you go out and speak to state and the local leaders and those units and those members, because they are wanting to know from you what your best practices are, what you recommend for them to be able to have more membership, get more involvement and engagement in their various um, associations on campus or within the community. So knowing your information and then if you are asked a question and you don't know the answer, be truthful and say, you know what? I don't have that answer right now. Well, let me get your name, phone number, and or email. And let me get back with you because I'd rather be honest and authentic. There's that word again. Be honest and truthful with you and give you the right information than just shoot from the hip because we can all talk. But we want to know if what you're saying truthful, is it valuable, is it value added, and will it push the mission forward? So doing your due diligence and speaking not only with authority, but with awareness. Thank you. Thank you. Your third question. How do you envision addressing the changes we see in younger families joining PTA? You may respond. That's a really good question because I am one of those individuals. Um, I deal with young parents all the time in the elementary, middle, and high schools. And it's very important when you are boots on the ground that you know what it is that they're needing because you've been there. Remembering from which you come and where you are going, being able to, as I mentioned in my speech, being able to empathize, being able to say, you know what, I truly do know what it is that you're feeling. I know, and here are the things that I did to make a difference, not only in my child's life, but others being a resource to them because we lack resources a lot of times because we do not know how to relate to the varying cultures within our communities. All we know is who we know. And in most cases, we talk to those individuals who look like us. So how are we helping everyone? But we're just truly helping ourselves. It's very important that you understand the dynamics of your audience, understand the cultures, understand the language. It's bigger than just English and Spanish. We have Koreans, we have Chinese, we have French, we have German, we have a plethora of cultures in our communities and we need to learn how to reach all of them, not just the ones we are most familiar with. Thank you. Thank you. Resources have dried up. Share two key areas on how we support the constituent associations and sustain their needs. You may respond. May I ask constituent association, do you define what that is? I can only repeat the question a second time for you. Oh, okay. Would okay. you like for it to be repeated? Repeat it? Sure, please, thank you. Resources have dried up. Share two key areas on how we support the constituent associations and sustain their needs. Okay. Well, um, in order to, to sustain someone's need, you need to understand what their need is. We do not assume what someone needs. We ask because people need to learn how to ask those questions, how to have those conversations, 
and how to respond in a way that's not condescending, but yet is respectful of whatever their situation is. So to be able to sustain or retain or help individuals who whose resources have dried up due to lack of employment or underemployment, then we need to understand what their need is. We don't assume. And when you have those conversations, you listen, not listening to respond, but listening to understand. And when they know you're listening and you're listening to understand, you will get more information from them. And then you will be able to attempt to meet the need by providing whatever grant, whatever organizations or charitable um, uh, charitable actions that are out in that particular community to help them in their time of need. So being able to relate, being able to listen, and then have resources in your pocket to meet the need of what they asked for and not what you assumed that they needed. Thank you. Thank you for being with us this evening.